suprapubic catheter basics for female pelvic surgeons, a collaborative effort between Indiana University and University Hospital's Cleveland Medical Center. We have no disclosures. Temporary voiding dysfunction is common after female pelvic floor surgery. This can be managed with temporary bladder catheterization through a suprapubic catheter or a transurethral catheter. Suprapubic catheter use has declined over time. Most mid and early career pelvic surgeons have less experience with suprapubic catheters in their training and are thus less likely to use them. As female pelvic surgeons, we should be comfortable with either catheterization technique. We will discuss the advantages and disadvantages between suprapubic and transurethral catheterization. We will demonstrate three insertion techniques. The Rutner balloon and the MacLock are inserted under cystoscopic guidance. The lousy retractor assisted technique is not. Troubleshooting tips will also be discussed. Suprapubic catheters have the following advantages over transurethral catheters. Fewer urinary tract infections, less pain, improved patient satisfaction and body image, less urethral trauma, and they are easier to manage, especially in cases of prolonged drainage. Disadvantages of the suprapubic catheter include potential bowel injury, potential urine leakage along the catheter tract, potential hematoma or urinoma formation, as well as an additional incision on the skin and in the bladder that is only one centimeter wide and heals by 24 hours after removal. The Rutner suprapubic balloon catheter. This catheter uses a needle obturator and an introducer for insertion. The introducer has three components, a dilator, a trocar stylet, and a peel away sheath. The Rutner suprapubic catheter insertion. Place the patient in Trendelenburg position to mobilize the bowel away from the bladder. Fill the bladder to capacity. Make a one centimeter stab incision in the midline, approximately three centimeters from the pubic symphysis. Insert the introducer and cystoscope. Aim for the air bubble in the bladder dome. Advance the sheath and remove the sharp stylet and dilator together. Thread the Rutner into the sheath. Inflate the balloon with no more than four cc's. Peel apart the two ears to remove the sheath. This ends the Rutner suprapubic catheter insertion. The MacLock suprapubic catheter has four parts. An introducer, a blunt loading obturator, the Dawson-Muller catheter, and a sharp stylet. MacLock assembly. Take the introducer and insert the blunt obturator, taking care to line up the grooves. Then insert both pieces into the catheter. Uncurl and extend the catheter tip to help guide the obturator introducer. Remove the blunt obturator and insert the sharp stylet. Your MacLock is now fully assembled and ready to use. MacLock troubleshooting tips. The catheter tip arrives tightly curled, so careful assembly is needed to avoid improper setup. Do not use the sharp stylet to straighten the tip, as it can easily pierce the lumen. Always use the blunt obturator. While the blunt obturator is less likely to damage the catheter lumen, it can exit from a fenestration instead of the tip. Avoid these mishaps by using care and assembly. MacLock insertion. With the patient in Trendelenburg position and the bladder filled to capacity, make a one centimeter midline incision three centimeters from the pubic symphysis. Insert the cystoscope and the MacLock SPC. Aim for the air bubble to enter through the dome. Maintain steady and controlled pressure to avoid pushing the tip through the posterior bladder. Advance the SPC until all five fenestrations are inside the bladder. Remove the introducer stylet. Pull on the black string to curl the catheter tip to overlap itself. Press the lever down over the string to lock it in place. This ends the MacLock suprapubic catheter insertion. The Lousley assisted suprapubic catheter insertion. Place the patient in Trendelenburg position. Keep the bladder empty. The Lousley retractor is a single unit reusable instrument. Open and close the retractor jaws to test it before using it on the patient. Insert the Lousley into the urethra and pass it through the urethra and the bladder. Adjust your grip, then aim the tip towards the anterior abdominal wall. 
Palpate the lousy tip 3 cm above the pubic symphysis. Make an incision over the tip of the lousy to accommodate the foley to be used. Extend the incision down into the fascia and bladder while maintaining upward pressure with the lousy tip. The tip will pop through the incision when the final layer has been breached. Open the jaws and thread a free tie through the wings. Use the tie to secure the foley tip to the lousy to prevent losing the foley in transit. Should that occur, a new cystotomy is often needed. This step prevents such a mishap. Next, align the foley with the lousy and secure the lousy jaws around it. Withdraw the lousy. Once the foley tip is visible, cut the suture to release it from the lousy only. Be careful not to cut the suture from the actual foley. Pull the foley back into the bladder and inflate the balloon. Verify correct placement with cystoscopy. The suprapubic catheter is ready for use. Temporary voiding dysfunction is common after female pelvic surgery. Suprapubic catheters may be useful in the management of these patients. Female pelvic surgeons should be able to offer suprapubic catheters in appropriate scenarios. We hope this video that discussed the insertion of the Rutner, the MacLock, and allows the assisted suprapubic catheter was helpful. Thank you.